For RCR TV, I'm Sean Kinney, and I'm joined today by Paul Colasar of Comscope. Uh, Paul's an engineering fellow for Comscope based up in Richardson, Texas. Prior to that, Paul worked with uh, Bell Labs from 1981 to 2001, I believe. And uh, we're here today to talk about a pretty exciting breakthrough Comscope's made in getting more capacity out of fiber transmission. So, uh, Paul, I wanted to start, if you could just uh, contrast and compare for us the fiber that's in normal usage that we're all familiar with, and then this multi-mode wideband fiber is sort of next generation solution. Sure, Sean, thanks. Uh, it's an excellent question. Uh, today, we have a couple of grades of what's called laser-optimized multimode fiber available, uh, commonly referred to as OM3 and OM4. Uh, these fibers are optimized to uh, maximize the capacity at a single wavelength, which is 850 nanometers, uh, otherwise known as short wavelength. Uh, most, if not all of the main major applications today run at 850 nanometers because they take advantage of this uh, window in the fiber, the spectral window, um, to get the most out of it. The OM3 fiber provides us with 2,000 megahertz kilometer of bandwidth, and we were able to transmit uh, about 300 meters at um, with the OM4 fiber, it offers more than double that bandwidth, 4,700 megahertz. And uh, IEEE has rated the uh, uh, transmission distance on that to 400 meters, or 10 gigabits per second. Okay, so you mentioned, um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. When, now, so that's, that's what we can do today with the, the fibers of today. Uh, and they, they will transmit greater capacity than 10 gigabits by going parallel. Uh, that is using multiple fibers in each direction and each one will carry 10 gigabits or even more than that at 25 gigabits per second. Um, so we can transmit 40 gig or 100 gig in the parallel fashion as something known as parallel transmission. The new fiber um, is designed to help us reduce the number of strands of glass in each direction by using a different multiplexing technique called wavelength division multiplexing. Now this is a technique that's been commonly used for decades in long haul transmission over single mode fiber. Um, and in that case, we're using single mode lasers operating at 1300 nanometers or 1550 nanometers in that range to go uh, and multiply the capacity of the fiber. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with multi-mode fiber. Uh, only this time we're going to use short wavelength division multiplexing, which means we'll be able to continue uh, to use the low cost sources, which were fundamental in delivering the cost advantage of multimode transmission at 850 nanometers by adding a different set of wavelengths at slightly longer values, longer wavelengths than 850. So we'll be having, for example, four wavelengths fit into a 100 nanometer spectrum. So, for example, 850 nanometer transmission plus nine, uh, I'm sorry, plus 880 nanometer transmission plus 910 nanometer transmission plus 940 nanometer transmission. Putting all four of them together means we can get four times the capacity or reduce the number of strands in each direction by a factor of four. And so we have now two wavelength, uh, two multiplexing dimensions to take advantage of. We'll have the traditional space division multiplexing with multiple fibers, and onto that we will add multiple wavelengths and, and increase the capacity by a factor of four. So, so for example, what that will do for us, um, it'll allow us to take what uh, IEEE has just standardized, um, one, the second generation of 100 gigabit ethernet, which operates at 25 gigabits per second on each of four fibers, so four times 25 being 100 gig, we'll be able to collapse that down to a single strand of glass with four wavelengths. And we'll be able to take that forward to say 400 gigabits per second. And instead of using 16 fibers, be able to use only four fibers. So you can see we're getting a much higher efficiency out of each strand of glass and be able to bring the cost of the cabling down that way. Okay. And you mentioned the uh, the IEEE uh, standard that applies to what we're talking about. Um, 
can you sort of take us through the research and development that, that went into uh, coming up with the transmission scheme and then taking that into a standardization? Yes, I'd be happy to. Uh, we started working with some transceiver partners and fiber uh, manufacturing partners uh, a couple of years ago, making, um, uh, well, having discussions on what kind of solutions would benefit both them and us. And what we found was a, a great confluence in going with wavelength multiplexing. And um, we knew that we could add additional capacity by adjusting the bandwidth characteristics of the fiber uh, to allow for a broader range of wavelengths to be supported. And the transceiver companies were also indicating that they were moving in that direction. So um, last October, we brought our partners together into the TIA, uh, TR42, uh, into a uh, subcommittee that I chair on optical systems and made a proposal to begin a new project to standardize a fiber that could have this type of bandwidth characteriz characterization and therefore support this sort of multiplexing at, um, uh, for, for future IEEE and fiber channel applications. And I think, uh, as I mentioned already, um, 100 gig ethernet, certainly a, um, a, an application that we could uh, leverage this uh, to, to, to its advantage. We could also apply this um, to a second generation of the newly uh, drafted 128 gig fiber channel. Um, that is similarly using four lanes of fiber uh, in each direction. We could collapse those down to uh, uh, one strand as well. And this, this would get folks back to the two fiber paradigm that they've been used to all the way up through 16 gig and now 25 gigabit. Uh, they'll be able to extend that to 100 gigabit and uh, get another generation out of uh, that two fiber interface that is uh, so popular. Yes, so if I'm understanding correctly, you can you can really push the the efficiency of the transmission, and that's where you derive the the major increase in the throughput speed. Correct. When you add another wavelength, you essentially double the capacity. So each wavelength carrying the same amount of information as the previous one just multiplies the capacity of the fiber by that much. And and by the way, uh, you you. Um, uh, wanted to know about what we did at OFC uh, this last um, month. There was a, a big show, a big trade show out in California, probably the biggest optical show on the in the plant on the planet every year is uh, OFC, and we partnered with uh, Finisar, a uh, leading transceiver vendor, uh, to demonstrate their uh, white, uh, what they call short wavelength division multiplexing tr transceivers. Uh, they have designed transceivers at 40 gigabits per second with four wavelengths and at 100 gigabits per second with four wavelengths. So both of these are able to operate on two fibers, one in each direction. Um, they demonstrated their capability on OM4 fiber as well as on wideband fiber. Um, on the OM4 fiber, they were able to transmit 100 meters and on the wideband fiber, 225 meters, which tells you that the increased bandwidth of the wideband fiber has come into play by extending the reach. It will similarly extend the bit rate as kind of a trade-off, reach versus bit rate, and uh, it can also extend the application space for the shortwave division multiplexing. So shortwave division multiplexing is a sort of a cornerstone technology uh, for the transceivers. And the wideband fiber, the wideband technology is the cornerstone technology for the fiber. You put them both together and you get an enhanced transmission system. Okay, and so if you can help put this into sort of a practical application context for us, if I uh, am, am operating a, a data center and I'm able to adopt this technology, what benefits am I gonna see? Well, you will immediately be able to um, see a reduction in the number of strands that have to be deployed to support these high bit rate applications. You'll, for example, be able to reduce your strand count 
from uh, four in each direction to one in each direction on, at 100 gigabits. And for example, at 400 gigabits, which is now being standardized by IEEE, instead of 16 strands in each direction, each operating at 25 gig, you'll be able to collapse that down to four strands in each direction with four fibers, each carrying 100 gigabits a piece. And if we increase the lane rate to 50 gigabits per second, then we'll re get a further reduction in the number of strands or the number of lasers on the same number of strands. All of this works in uh, concert to reduce the cost of the total system on the cabling because you're needing fewer strands of glass and on the transceiver by making it uh, more efficient as you move up into the data rate, higher data rates, you need fewer lasers. Okay, and you mentioned the, the uh, demonstration last month out in California. Is the, uh, is the technology going to be made market ready here in the short term? Uh, well, that's a good question. Yes, um, two things. Uh, Finisar's announcement at OFC was to say that they were going to bring out a 40 gigabit shortwave division multiplexing transceiver, which will operate at 10 gigabits per lane on each of four colors, the four short wave color uh, wavelengths I mentioned before, and it will operate on OM3 and OM4 and wideband. And of course, you will be able to go further and further distance on each of those three different types of fiber. Comscope is also planning to release a product within this year. I believe it's targeting the third quarter, uh, and um, it will be a wideband product such as we demonstrated with Finisar. Uh, it will look um, and, well, it'll look and terminate at, like traditional fiber. It won't be visibly different other than perhaps the sheath color. Um, so it will, be, uh, it will be distinguishable from OM3 and OM4 because of this new property. And uh, that you'll be able to immediately tell if you've got this wideband fiber in that you can now do these extended reach or extended bit rate uh, uh, application support over your cabling. So yes, we will see both transceivers as well as new cabling products come out within this year, uh, both in going in this direction of supporting shortwave division multiplexing uh, on wideband fiber. Well, Paul, I really appreciate you walking us through some of the technical details, and we certainly look forward to a, a product launch later in the year. It sounds like a really exciting development with a lot of potential in, in uh, the data center space. So thank you so much for joining us and sharing all that information. You're welcome, Sean. Thank you for the interview.